Up until now, the main controller I've been using for my Mr. is my 8-bit Doe SM30 Pro Plus. But if you're anything like me, you have a bunch of NES and Super Nintendo controllers. Or maybe you have some of the other 8-bit Doe controllers like the 2.4 GHz SNES controller. Or maybe the M30 2.4 GHz. Now all the original controllers and these 2.4 GHz 8-bit Doe controllers all use the original console's controller port. And I've been looking for a simple solution for connecting all these controllers to my Mr. I found this project on Tindy a while ago. Let's go ahead and take everything out of the bag. This is called the Triple Controller by Timville85. The kit comes with a Sega Genesis port, Super Nintendo port, and an NES port, along with these pin headers that let us use this Arduino Pro Micro. Let's put this thing together and see if we can get some original controllers to work with the Mister. Let's start by soldering this Big Chungus Super Nintendo controller port. I'm gonna try to get everything flush. And then we can solder the rest of the pins. Now we can do the NES port. It has these cool like standoff things. Go ahead and put those in the holes. And we can solder him in too. Last but not least is this Genesis port. I'm gonna put some solder on one of these pins. And then I'm gonna push up on the port and heat it up so that I can try to get the port as flat as possible on the bottom here. And then I can solder the rest. All right, that's it for the controller ports. Now we have to do these headers. And now somebody's gonna tell me that I messed up and I should have done these first. You should do the lowest parts first. That way you can kind of put the board down and use the board itself to hold these components in, but I think that we can just put the component in here to get a little solder on my iron, and we can just tack one of these pins down and straighten it out after. Straighten it out. Okay, now let's do the opposite side and kind of do the same thing. Heat it up and push it flat. And now I can finish soldering the header. Now I just do the same thing on the other side. All right, that's it for the bottom of the board. Let's go ahead and clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. We're also going to need to solder a jumper on the Arduino here. If you bought one of the Pro Micros like they have on Tindy, there is a J1 jumper on the top of the board, but for me, I have to solder this VCC jumper on the bottom. I have to solder the 5 volt one. Only soldering we have left to do is these pin headers into the Arduino. And to keep these pins straight, I'm actually going to just put this whole thing into the headers on the board. That way everything stays nice and lined up. All right, now we solder. With all the soldering done, let's go ahead and put everything into this nice purple case. We've got to put the Genesis port in first and actually the wider part of the Genesis port. So we're going to take the shell that has the wider Genesis port and slide that in there. And at the same time, kind of wedge the NES port in there. There we go, everything's sitting pretty flush. Now we'll take the top of the case and we don't have to slide anything in because this just kind of goes over. Now unfortunately these M2 by 16 screws don't come with the kit, so I just bought this big box of them on Amazon. It's always nice to have extra screws and stuff so that I'm not looking for a specific screw when I'm trying to finish a project. So let's go ahead and use four of these screws in the corners. Now 
I think that looks really awesome. Now let's go flash the firmware. All right, let's go ahead and plug in our Pro Micro. Since I've got a SparkFun Pro Micro, I'm gonna go through the process of using that board to install this firmware. First thing I've gotta do is copy this code from this SparkFun site. Then we're gonna open the Arduino software and go to File, Preferences, and under Additional Board Manager URLs, click this box and add that SparkFun URL to the end. Now we'll go to Tools, and under Board, we'll open this Board Manager link. We'll type in SparkFun, and I want this SparkFun AVR Boards package. Click install, and then we can close out of there. I've already downloaded the code from the triple controller GitHub page, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this triple USB controller.ino file. Under tools, go under board, and under SparkFun AVR boards, we're gonna select SparkFun Pro Micro. Then I'm gonna select the five volts here from the dropdown. And for port, we're gonna select COM8, and then we'll go ahead and hit upload. All right, it looks like it's done uploading. Let's go check if our triple controller works with our mister. I've got my mister, I've got my Apido SN30 Pro Plus, and I have a keyboard here. Since my SN30 Plus is already set up, I'm gonna use it to go to the define joystick buttons option. And now let's see if it detects the inputs from our NES controller. This was an issue that I saw on the GitHub that because it's an older controller with an older plug, that it might not make good connection inside of our triple controller. Now there's two options. The first option is to bend the pins inside of the triple controller, basically so that it makes better contact with the older NAS controller plug there. Or you can use a replacement wire from somewhere like console five. While we're here, we might as well check the 8 Bluetooth adapter for the NES. And I'll use my NES Bluetooth controller. I can't seem to get the NES to work, but let's try the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo controller seems to be working. I'm gonna go ahead and use spacebar to skip anything I don't want to test. And then I'm gonna use the controller to map these inputs. Let's see if we can use the Super Nintendo controller to play some Super Nintendo games. The Super Nintendo controller worked really awesome. I didn't really notice any latency. I, I mean, I'm sure it's probably there. This project is based off of the Damon Byte project, so it doesn't really have that much latency, especially on this original controller. Let's try some Sega Genesis. This time I'm gonna use my M30 2.4G. This one was detected right away. This Genesis controller works pretty good too. Let's give the NES controllers one more try and see where we get. Okay, let's try this other controller. Huh, it doesn't like to be plugged in all the way. That's really weird, now it's working. Let's go ahead and try a game. Other than that initial issue where it wasn't detecting because I had it plugged in all the way, if you plug it out a little bit, it works fine, even with an older controller and the older plug. So that's really interesting. NES seems to be the a little bit finicky one, but the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo one, they work pretty fine without any issues. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more testing, but so far I really like this triple controller adapter with my mister. It might not be as low latency as something like Snack, but at least you don't have to deal with multiple different adapters for different controllers. You can have different controllers or 8-bit dough receivers plugged in and not have to worry about plugging and unplugging them in all the time. And like I said, it's pretty affordable at about $35. I'll leave a link to the kit as well as all the tools that I used in the description. If you like this project, give this video a like and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my latest modding tutorial videos. I'll see you in the next video.